Caddis Maximus here. This is actually going to be a real short video just about hydraulic bottle jacks. I'm going to do another bottle jack review of the old versus this newer compact uh, Pittsburgh 20 ton. But this is just a general quick video about bottle jacks. For new viewers, it'll give you some pointers and safety tips. And for my more technically experienced users, I do have a unique two-stage bottle jack here, which are uh, unbelievably rare. This is the only one I've ever seen as far as a multi-stage manual jack. And it's actually a spare tire jack, I believe, from an old Mazda. Anyway, hydraulic bottle jacks were popularized actually after World War II. It wasn't that they were popularized. It was just the fact that uh, machine tools and machinery had got, and particularly precision grinding of the internal cylinders and the pistons uh, had gotten high enough quality to make it more economically feasible to make hydraulic bottle jacks. Hydraulic jacks versus screw jacks, journaling jacks, obviously are much more efficient and can give you much greater leverage ratios. We all know about hydraulics, uh, and if you don't, it's the big pistons that make heavy equipment move, and the reason is, is that you can use a fluid and have one, a pump with a very small diameter. You pump a bunch, and it can exert a ton of pressure onto a larger diameter piston, giving you a, a leverage ratio through a fluid. Now, as far as portable jacks, they start getting pretty he or physically pretty heavy because of the amount of steel that's in them to support their rated loads, such as this. This would be a 1,500 kilograms, so this would be a one and a half ton, two ton, six ton, and this is a 20 ton. Uh, even Harbor Freight, they have 30 ton jacks, so they really get up. 30 tons will lift a two, uh, the entirety of a two-story house. So those kind of ratios you only ever really see at you know heavy equipment service, maybe railroads, that kind of stuff. But what is nice is things like presses and some various other things are, I should say, various other uses. It's surprising that uh, some of the times that a nice uh, large heavy duty jack comes in handy. One nice aspect of using an oversized bottle jack is you have a greater safety ratio. They're more stable because they have a wider base and have a much thicker, more rigid piston. And they're actually easier to lift up. Pumping a two ton bottle jack, lifting a two ton load is actually harder than using a 20 ton bottle jack to lift a two ton load. Uh, but you do need to pump a few more times because there's just so much more diameter and as you can see that's really what makes the difference most of the pumps on these are going to be right around the same size you just are pumping against a larger and larger diameter pistons bottle jacks will make uh when they reach the top they'll make a squeaking sound which is you know you'll know when you hit the, the travel limit and when they get overloaded they do have a ball bearing set up in there uh, where they will release and that's the two big safety issues two bottle jacks is one they're never perfect They do leak down. They're not for long-term holding at all No hydraulic system really is unless it's an active system that constantly is uh, Adjusting and pumping itself back up Otherwise hydraulic jacks are to lift the load and then you need to get something solid under it known as cribbing blocks of wood screw jacks jack stands something that is much more rigid and permanent than the bottle jack itself. The second issue that happens with uh, small hydraulic jacks is many times, and I've seen this, you know, at junkyards where uh, people will use tiny little bottle jacks like these two tons on surprisingly large vehicles and trucks, and then they're actually on top of the vehicle or sitting inside it trying to do something. And that's when you can run into an issue because a hydraulic jack, I believe the over rating is somewhere around 50%, but it's not perfect meaning that this, all this will actually force the piston back down past its safety valve at around three tons, but that's not consistent. Some you know, will do it. This is a 4,000 pound jack. Some at 4,500 or 5,000 pounds will actually bypass and push the piston back down, not through settling and slight leakage, but through overloading and bypass, and it can be sudden. And when you're near the load limit of a bottle jack, it is super dangerous in those situations because when you hit the load limit, it will just go right down. If there's somebody under the load or part of your own body under the load, uh, it just got crushed where screw jacks, uh, jack stands, obviously that doesn't happen with. That's why they're never for working on, you never work under something that is supported by a hydraulic jack. Even if you have a real big, heavy-duty, oversized one like this, where you know it's just well overrated, sure, tech, you know, more technically you could get away with it. If you're lifting up the back of a truck with a 20-ton jack, you could have 
on uh, the whole neighborhood stand in the back of that vehicle and not have to worry about it failing. But nonetheless, you have to, you can't make any compromises. There, any time that you make a compromise with a hydraulic jack is when you have some issue or you get a Harbor Freight one and for some reason it has some type of defect and then uh, falls down on you, you know, you can't really recover from that. One nice aspect is seals for hydraulic pistons are actually pretty standardized, both in metric and imperial sizes, and many bottle jacks, not this one because it's welded, many of these have large nuts where they can actually be disassembled and serviced. Uh, and although this one doesn't feature it, although it has a nice little swivel, is all bottle jacks, or most of them, have little threaded tops, just like this here, where you can thread them out, and that allows you just to get a little more adjustment, maybe a little more reach in certain situations. And it's always been a nice feature of bottle jacks. And to tell you the truth, it took me many, many years ago, but it took me a while to figure out that pretty much all bottle jacks have this adjustable nut. And many of them give you quite a bit of reach, two, three, even four inches. Even this big old Harbor Freight here uh, still has a real nice, thick, heavy-duty Acme thread. You get a nice three inches of additional lift or I should say range, and it actually increases the versatility of a bottle jack a great deal. So I always like to make people aware of that. But you tend to want to screw them down when you're done using them, otherwise it really likes to rust and get crud in there. One aspect that may not be more commonly known is we look at, see, these are Torin Blackjacks, and they're an okay brand, is that this one has an additional feature here, which is this, what appears to be another capped port, and indeed that is, and that would be a place where you could hook up a pressure gauge. Most manual hydraulic jacks, my understanding, operate at a maximum 10,000 PSI. And so you could hook up a hydraulic gauge there. And if you're lifting a heavy load, what's nice about having a gauge, and I'm going to do it on this one, is it lets you know exactly uh, how far or how close you are to the load limit or the capacity limit, as well as giving you a general idea of exactly how heavy is something that you're lifting. So if you're lifting up a corner of a house, actually a six-ton jack would do that. And if you had a pressure gauge, you know, if it hit 5,000 PSI that you could estimate that, wow, you know, I'm lifting up uh, three tons of weight. And it's always kind of nice to have that ability. And so the unique thing would be this tire jack or this spare tire replacement jack. I believe our old Mazda pickups. Uh, I talked about those Toyota journaling jacks in the previous video. Those are the nicest screw jacks or manual or mechanical jacks, I should say non-hydraulic that I've ever seen. This is the nicest hydraulic jack I've ever seen that for a spare tire of any vehicle. And even versus the safety warnings that are in really tiny text on these black jacks, the Harbor Freight just has a real small label on the back. This is a big, bright, white, large print label on the front, giving, and I'm really surprised about that, and then on the back, they have additional uh, safety instructions, which I've always been surprised about. And this is the model number if you want to try to find it, a MPD-1.5 triple IP by Masada, M-A-S-A-D-A. -A. There you go. You can read it. I'm not going to try to mispronounce that. One other thing I was going to mention is many bottle jacks, these release valves are like these pinch styles, and that's always kind of been annoying, but, you know, I end up using pliers with them anyway. These usually come with two-piece handles, and they're like these where they interlink, and one end of the tube is this uh, pinch so you can adjust these, and it's always kind of funky. I always like ones where they have the two tine tabs, such as this one right here. You can also tell quality of jacks. Many of them just have cast ductile iron bases as well as cast upper nuts. Nicer ones, like the Harbor Freight 30 ton, is actually a plate steel bottom. And even this one, we can see that it is actually a solid plate of steel that they use as the base of this jack. So that's actually quite nice. And so I was mentioning how the little screws in these uh, give you some additional reach. And, and we'll do a little comparison. Both of these are about equivalent. This one's a little larger than this blackjack. If we look at the height of both of them together, we can see the black jack, it's a hair shorter, but they're right about the same size. Now what we'll go ahead and do, and I'll pause this video and I'll jack these up. Maybe I'll jack this one up just to, so people can see uh, the two-stage jack actually extend here. Just a second. Here we go. I'll just do this by hand. Maybe I can. Let me get some pliers. The one big thing to note about these is when you're tightening the valve, you tighten it till it's cinched but not too much torque because every time you op you shut the valve, not when you open it, uh, it kind of wears out the little valve seat. And eventually, and usually what the first issue people have with bottle jacks 
in manual jacks is just over enough cycles the valve seat will just end up getting totally worn out and it just uh, starts leaking down even though you have the valve tight and that's always kind of an issue you can fix them by pulling this out and, and seeing if you can't clean up the seat some sometimes you can also add an additional ball bearing in there to help out but many times that's usually what kills a jack is that the um, lock screw the lock valve ends up just getting worn out so that's why you don't just wrench down on these every time because uh, you can literally ruin these things and opening and closing 50 or 100 times if you're not careful. So you always cinch them down till they're tight, but then that's all you need. So what's real interesting is you've people have seen these, say, on dump trucks where you have those hydraulic pistons that are nested inside additional hydraulic pistons, and that's exactly what this jack does. And let me go ahead and get it going here. There we go. We got the second stage, which interesting is the diameter of the inner pistons is slightly smaller than the diameter of the outer shell and you can feel that when this pumps up it the due to the pressure differences the thick shell always comes up first it always looks like a single stage and then you'll hit a point where it actually gets harder to pump because you have less of a leverage ratio as it moves to the second stage and that's what ends up coming up afterwards is the second stage and now we can see where it's kind of hit some friction here because there's no load on it and now the inner pistons actually coming up and there's they are complicated because you have to have multiple layers of seals etc let me get this camera raised here we go and we'll raise this up to the top and we'll compare it against the blackjack here so you can see exactly how much of a difference in height that you get out of both of these jacks what's nice about this little orange ones is actually pretty fast maybe 30 or 40 pumps and then you just hit the top and this one really stops off you can't even, I can't even get this on the screen, but this thing is absolutely massive when it comes all the way up, and that makes just a huge difference. It's really surprising to have a little jack that can extend itself out that much. This one gives a good nine inches of uh, travel. It's really surprising. I.e., this goes from about seven and a half inches tall to about 16 and a half inches tall, so it can more than double its own height. And we'll compare that with the blackjack. So we already knew it was uh, just a little bit taller than the blackjack. We'll see how much extension. And this, you know, one issue is that if you need that ex extra extension, you have to thread out these center pip, uh, posts. As far as I know, all the ones I've run into, they have like a little welded piece at the bottom so that you can't actually unscrew them out too far. It's easier to see on the table. There's a good four inches of difference. So this with the th post threaded all the way out still is four inches short of what this one is and they're both about the same size when they're compressed and so that's really the big deal is that um, if you can ever find any of those these two stage bottle jacks as far as the situations where you use a bottle jack change a spare tire or all sorts of automotive needs when you're working on you know transmissions clutch all that kind of stuff being able to do you know adjustments and alignments as well as construction activities and uh, even equipment leveling. Uh, it's really surprising when you have a two-stage that one, you know, you know it's a little bit weaker because it has these two sleeves, but uh, not having to build up a bunch of extra cribbing blocks to set the jack on. If you're actually trying to lift something up using jacks and then put blocks under it, maybe reasonably high up, uh, oftentimes you have to lift with the jack, put blocks under it, collapse the jack, put the jack on more blocks, and then kind of stair-step your way up. Having a two-stage can make the work go twice as fast. And it's always really cool to see a jack. And anytime I brought this out with friends, they've always thought that was really cool to see a two-stage hydraulic jack, because none of them have ever seen one either. This is the only one I've ever found, too. Anyway... Uh, this is the end of another uh, video, probably a little bit too long and boring for just uh, hydraulic jacks. But this is going to essentially close out my lifting and jacking video, except for I'll do a quick review uh, in the future between this newer and an older Harbor Freight 20 ton. Anyway, I really appreciate everybody watching, and if you haven't subscribed, please do subscribe. See you at next video. Catus Maximus out. Uh, I had a quick addendum here, and I forgot to mention one of the last adva big advantages to a hydraulic jack is when you need to lower the load that you can open the valve and have it be both quick uh, and pretty smooth. 
Also, another addendum, I forgot to mention this, and uh, I have some big sockets. I actually haven't done full reviews. I've done reviews of some large sockets, but at some point I'll do a review of just general large sockets to kind of do it as a uh, tool tour. But one of the incentives for collecting those up is when you run into situations like these bottle jacks where you may find particularly... Uh, higher capacity ones or better brands, say a Jet or something like that, where you know it's an expensive bottle jack, but it may have some leaking issues, and uh, you can get quite a good deal. I've actually worked on a couple of bottle jacks. They're both Jets that <laughs> did leak from around the piston. Uh, we have a place here in town that actually specializes in seals. It's a seal shop, and one guy, and surprisingly enough, uh, for year decades, uh, he's been able to run his business just by collecting not just O-rings, but just every type of hydraulic seal, seal sap, shaft seals, um, and being able to support industry and how he does it locally. Is, yeah, you can order all that stuff online, but if you have a piece of equipment that's down, um, time is money, and if you can get a seal locally and get it back up and running the same day, uh, it's a big deal. So it's kind of nice, and you can walk in there with one of these pistons, and he'll just be able to dig up the appropriate seals. It's pretty amazing. But you need some big sockets, and it's really surprising. This little two-ton bottle jack would use a one and three-eighths inch socket. That would be about one of the largest sockets anybody would have. Uh, Half-inch drive socket sets tend to stop around one and a quarter inches, although they do go up to one and a half inches. I do have some one and a half inch uh, half inch drive sockets, but the, surprisingly enough, the nuts that are on these bottle jacks can really be quite stubborn. They're also not sized very well because many times these are machined, actually, surprisingly enough, on the black jacks. On the Harbor Freight, it's a cast nut, um, and so the walls end up being a little bit tapered and pretty rough, and so you just have to have a mixture of sockets to find the right one. But just the example of sizing, the small jack needs a huge one and three eighths socket i guess that's relatively huge this is a one and seven eight socket just to work on the six ton which is even more surprising and if you did want to rebuild say this pittsburgh uh you would need a huge old socket like this three inch that's the size that you need to have that's actually perfectly sized it's you know it there's almost no play it even rocks unless you get it in just the right position there which is interesting, the slight con uh, out of round or unevenness of sockets. Sometimes you put it on this way and it'll rock around and you'll just turn it and look at that. It's nice and solid. It's always kind of an odd thing I've noticed about sockets is very slight imperfections can cause some situations, real surprising differences where it just doesn't fit right there, but it's nice and solid there. And so, yes, there's one reason to have giant sockets is then you can rebuild hydraulic cylinders. Many of them do use nuts to uh, seal and many use like pin spanners and other methods to uh, seal them but nuts are still pretty common especially on these manually operated ones and it's actually kind of nice to be able to service them. You can save quite a bit of money uh, being able to simply pull off that nut so you can get the piston out and fix the seals. Okay that's the end of this addendum. Thanks.